So welcome back. Uh, this afternoon, uh, the third speaker will have to have met her from Washington University in St. Louis. He's going to talk about K2 and quantum curves. So let's welcome. Okay, um, so I want to start by thanking the organizers for the invitation to speak, even if it only turned out to be like this, and to thank uh, Sungju and Mauricio for their kindness in putting up with my rescheduling twice after this uh, injury yesterday. I uh, really wanted to come in person, but at least this way I can still speak. So I'm going to talk about K2 and quantum curves. The story of this work, which is all of which is joint with Chuck Duran and my former students, Sumya Sunhababu, goes back to 2015 when Marcos Mourinho uh, approached me and Chuck uh, to ask if we could prove an identity, which followed from recent conjectures that he had made with Alba Grassi and Santiago Codicito and others. Um, and so I'll just call these the Geneva conjectures because they're all in Geneva. Um, so here's one of the two identities that he mentioned, and it arose from considering the special case of their conjectures in the Tuft limit, where h bar goes to infinity. But it immediately became apparent that this was really a conjecture about limits of regulators on K2 of curves. So it was provable by evaluating in two different ways the regulator of such a class on a family degenerating to its maximal conifold point where it becomes of genus zero after normalizing. Um, but as we look more deeply into their work, uh, what started to stand out at us was what the conjectures meant in h bar equals two pi, the maximal supersymmetric case. Um, and I'm gonna explain that in this talk where that led. Um, so for curves of genus one, uh, on which I'm going to concentrate, the basic objects are going to be such a curve together with a K2 class on it. And the main point that there is a connection between, on the one hand, Hodge theoretically distinguished points in the moduli of such pairs um, and eigenvalues of operators on L2 of R obtained by quantizing the equations of the curves. So I'll start with the operators, which are the so-called quantum curves of the title. And the purpose of the talk will really be to illustrate connections between these four apparently far-flung areas. We know from mirror symmetry, of course, um, and work of Yao and Lian and many other people, uh, some of whom are in the audience, the, the story of mirror symmetry often is in Hodge theoretic terms, portrayed as being between three and two in this picture, the lower uh, left uh, diagonal, if you will. So I want to convince everyone in the audience that uh, one and four are also a natural part of the picture. Okay, so let's start with a coincidence. This is gonna be a purely numerical coincidence from considering two uh, a priori completely different problems. So I start with a meromorphic function on the complex plane with no poles in a big strip about the real line. Then we can view uh, e to the two pi i ddz as a shift operator, um, shifting the argument of such a function by two pi i. So the basic calculation, if you were to write something locally as a power series about zero is what's shown there. It's not difficult at all. But now let's consider something more complicated. We can consider um, this sum of two such shifts together with multiplication operators, multiplication by e to the r and by e to the minus r. You sum it all together and think of that as an operator on L2 of r. Um, this can be, I mean, this has motivation from physics um, that was considered by Mourinho and Grassi. Uh, as the quantum Hamiltonian corresponding to a matrix model for an ideal Fermi gas. And Mourinho and company were after an exact quantization condition. See, um, normally one would write h bar in place of 2 pi and write everything in an asymptotic expansion in h bar, but they don't want to do that. They want to know the exact answer as sort of a function of h bar, and in particular, in this case, of 2 pi. 
2 pi, and I mean, normally in those exponentials, one would have h bar i instead of 2 pi i. So we want eigenfunctions and eigenvalues for this operator. Unfortunately, though, this is a nasty operator. It's unbounded. It's a challenge to even write down functions in its domain. But it turns out it has a very nice inverse. It's bounded, self-adjoint, and a trace class. You can take the sum of the eigenvalues of the inverse, and that converges. So you can also show that those eigenvalues are countable and limit to infinity. Um, and so you have a physics paper here and an analysis paper that followed it uh, and proved things rigorously. And then uh, Mourinho and I guess a postdoc um, did some numerical computations of eigenfunctions and eigenvalues for this operator. And here are the first three that they found. Um, and the numbers don't look especially memorable, but um, they'll come back. The form of, the, of this quantum curve, or it will be a quantum curve, the form of phi hat suggests an algebraic curve, x plus x inverse plus y plus y inverse equals lambda. So level sets of a Laurent polynomial. Um, is there any algebraic geometry or Hodge theory in this? So here's something apparently completely different we look at the Legendre curve pulled back by t goes to 16t squared. So it's a, a family now over p1 minus four points. And we have cycles alpha t and beta t on it. Now we have well-known formulas for periods of this thing. Um, so here's the Picard-Fuchs operator. Um, it's a sort of hypergeometric pullback situation. And here's the first period. Uh, where a n is 2n choose n squared. The second period, of course, has to be nastier because it has to change by a multiple of a of t when you go around the origin, t equals zero, but you're doing Dane twist there. And, uh, you know, you might wonder why there's an eight here. Well, I'm really using twice beta t. Um, so this is an integral basis, but it's an integral basis for something else, which will come later. Okay, so those are the two periods. That's the basis for solutions of this uh, Picard-Fuchs operator. And now by using the method of variation of parameters, I can cook up a function, b integral of a minus a integral of b, satisfying the inhomogeneous equation, uh, lc equals eight, equals a constant. So this is a uh, first example of a unipotent extension of this um, differential system. Now I want to tune the choices of the integrals, um, namely the constants of those integrals, so that the monodromy of C is sort of integral. In other words, lies in two pi i squared Z um, times the lattice generated by A and B. And then I can divide C by A and the monodromy will then be, well, with the four pi squared, in z of one tau, the period lattice of the elliptic curve. So that makes the monodromy of C integral, or rather of new integral. And you can ask what the meaning of that is. The point um, abstractly is to have an integral, to have integral bases for the local systems underlying the Z variations of mixed Hodge structure with Picard Fuchs operators DL where d is logarithmic differentiation, kills the constant uh, dl, so that's a, b, and c, and ld, which would be 2 pi i, the integral of a, and the integral of b. OK. So it turns out that we must choose our constants of integration to be pi i and minus pi squared over 12 times 8 over 2 pi i. That is what works. and from that, you compute this new. Remember, going back a, a couple slides, new was the quotient of this by a times 2 pi i squared. So we get new equals this quantity, where the O of t log t is very small as t goes to the origin, and I'm left with the first two terms. For small negative t, new of t passes through infinitely many positive integers, right? because log squared gets very large. 
and everything is real. We call these points mixed attractor points. Um, the, the analogy here is to attractor points for families of compact Calabio threefolds, because here we have an integral class in F1 of variation in mixed Hodge structure that would not typically be there for most points. And that's exactly what a rank one attractor point is uh, in the case of compact Calabio threefolds. So now setting mu of Tn equals n plus two and solving for Tn to get these mixed attractor points, we get approximately minus log of minus Tn is pi times square root of n plus five six. The, in, the five six comes from two minus seven six. So now you calculate those and you find something that looks very, very reminiscent of the previous eigenvalues or rather of their logarithms. And so, what the heck is going on? There's some very bizarre coincidence happening. We'd like to know more about this, certainly. So, Mourinho and Grassi to the rescue, perhaps. They have a grand proposal in the context of non perturbative topological string theory, which in particular relates the spectrum of phi hat from one to the vanishing locus of a quantum theta function defined by enumerative geometry of local F naught. Okay, so on the other hand, the sort of B model of the enumerative geometry of local F naught would be the variation of mixed Hodge structure on H3 of the hori vafa model given by, well, you take your Laurent polynomial 5xy, you add A plus UV to it. And you think of this as some kind of uh, one-dimensional conic bundle over uh, GM squared. And so it's a threefold. And the degeneracy locus of the conic bundle is exactly the level sets of uh, the Laurent polynomial, phi. So phi plus A equals zero. And so what you get is you get an extension of mixed Hodge structure of this form. So this is the P and Q types. In other words, there's a class of type 3, 3. Um, and there's the H1 of this elliptic curve twisted up by a Q of minus one. So its periods are integrals of the three form shown there. And a basis for that is none other than two pi i, a tilde and b tilde from part two, where you identify little a with minus one over t. The point here is that there's an isogeny between the elliptic curve phi plus a equals zero and the Legendre curve. Um, and the mirror map is given by e to the a tilde, and one can show that that identifies zeros of theta, the quantum theta function, with mixed attractors. Um, so that's a, that's a form of local mirror symmetry. So both one and two are on the B model side, before we got to this slide. So perhaps there is a more direct relationship between the spectrum and mixed attractors, which we numerically saw the coincidence of, that doesn't pass through mirror symmetry. If we could find that, then we could actually confirm this conjecture of Mourinho and Grassi. So the picture up to this point is this. We have operators on L2 of R, uh, specifically quantum curves and their spectra, linked by these Geneva conjectures to the enumerative geometry of the local Calabia threefolds and the quantum theta function you build from it. So the spectrum is supposed to be the same as the zeros of the quantum theta function where both live as countable subsets of moduli in some sense. Now, local mirror symmetry in the form that I worked out uh, as a consequence of Irritani's work in the compact case with Spencer Block and Pierre Vanhoff um, says that this local Calabia threefold, its enumerative geometry, this quantum theta function should be correspond to variations of mixed Hodge structure of the form we just saw, the periods of hori vafa models integrally, and the quantum theta zero should correspond to mixed attractor points. There was some extra additional stuff to get torsion corrections right that we had to work out in the paper with Chuck and Sumya, um, which is why that's listed there. So what we want to do is complete the right-hand side of this diagram and thereby prove this h bar equals two pi case of the connections. So let me say something about algebra and k-theory now. Um, are there any questions so far? It's sort of, I'm lecturing into a, a black hole, and so I don't know. 
people want to interject. Okay, so I'll continue. So this is really Balenson's formula, except in the, in the early paper he wrote it, uh, he has a footnote saying that he learned it from his mama. So let X over C be a smooth projective curve. Um, then we have this thing called K2 of its function field, where you take the function field and you wedge it over Z with itself. That gives a group. So a group of symbols modulo certain relations, namely FG plus GF equals zero and bilinearity in Chandri. And then you quotient by this, uh, this, the normal subgroup generated by that, by relations, the Steinberg relations like that. And then you say, well, I'm going to examine um, symbols in the limit where a point on the curve goes to some P and, uh, in the support of the divisor of F or G. And then I compute this thing, F to the order of G over G to the order of F at that point. And I want plus or minus of that to be one everywhere. So the kernel of that tame symbol map is the motivic cohomology group H two X with Z of two coefficients. We want to compute the regulator or Hodge realization map RX from that group to the lean cohomology which is really nothing more than cohomology of X uh, with coefficients in C mod four pi squared Z. And Balenson tells you that you can compute it as follows. You can take any homotopy loop based at X naught um, and any FG in the kernel of the tame symbol and say RX of FG paired with the homology class. In other words, this is gonna to descend to homology is well defined there, is given by log f d log g minus log g of the base point d log f integrated over gamma. Here, log of f is analytically continued from x naught. So how do we use this in the case of a family of curves? And if I have a family of motivic cohomology classes like that, we can consider their fiber-wise extensions and the regulator classes of those fiber-wise fiber extensions and interpret the cohomology classes as elements in this X group, mixed Hodge structure. So that gives you a variation of mixed Hodge structure that looks very much like the one we had coming from the hori Waffle model. Um, so we have a 2-2 class here extended by H1 of the curve. This family of extensions yields a variation of mixed Hodge structure by Griffith's transversality, um, applied to an F2 class that lives in F1. So you get something in F1, H1, tensor omega 1s when you apply Nabla to the family of regulated classes. So it just gives a family of holomorphic one forms. And in fact, if this Z up here, this family of motivic classes, lifts a big symbol FG on the total space, then Nabla R is nothing more than D log F wedge D log G viewed as an element of this. All right. So any, any questions at this point? OK. Then let me go on to the families of elliptic curves that I want to study. So let delta be a reflexive polygon, and I'll write delta circle for its polar polygon. So here are four examples of the kinds of polygons I'm after. I want them vertically to be inside the strip, the horizontal strip, from y equals negative 1 to y equals 1. So there are up to unimodular transformation, 15 such. Uh, reflexive polygons. And I put our circle to be just the number of points of integer points on the boundary of delta circle. Um, so this is going to have meaning as uh, the when you have the, the canonical maximal unipotent monotomy point at t equals zero, this will be the number of components that, that neuron and gon has. 
Okay, now let phi be a Laurent polynomial with Newton polygon phi and edge polynomials all of the form w plus yeah. one dk. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I, I just can't help it. Don't you mean 16? I mean 15 because the one that does, that gives p2, the p2 polytope with vertices at two negative one, negative one, two, and negative one, negative one. There's no way to fit this inside uh, that uh, strip. Uh, you lost me there. Why? Why, why not? Um, well, uh, it's sort of there's no way to make it less than cubic. Okay, but you get a modular transformation in Y. No, it's three by three, so you can just map your case for P two. Yeah. Yeah. So the one on the left is the dual Wait, the triangle, the dual right? Region, right? No, no, it's a triangle. Yes. Do you see what I mean? Is he wrong? Is he right or am I? No, I, I, I think uh, what Matt said is like you because the the point of it is like uh you know three by three. It's too big. It's too big. You cannot just put it into that strip. Yeah. So I want everything to be in this strip. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and so this one, I just realized I could draw. This one doesn't work. I think even after unimodular transform, transformation, there's no way to make it fit. Oh, okay. So we're talking about two different triangles. I'm, I'm referring to this one, the, the first one on your slide. Yeah, so this one for me is a P2 dual. Okay. Yeah, so we can do P2 that's dual, we just can't do P2. I know what you mean. But yeah. The, yeah, that one you're talking about is uh, mirror P2. Yeah, 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 yeah that's exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we can do 15 of the 16 polygons. Okay. Great. All right, so I'm gonna choose the unique Laurent polynomial um, after unimodularly normalizing the polygon that is of this form. Constant term zero, uh, edge polynomials as shown, binomial. And let EA and P delta be the closure of EA cross, which is just the level sets of the Laurent polynomial. A is, a is allowed to vary over P1 minus a finite set of points. And that gives, um, well, the, by curly E, I actually mean including the singular fibers. Um, so this is gonna be a smooth, relatively minimal elliptic surface. So E infinity is the neuron R circle gone that I mentioned before. Um, and we take alpha in H1 uh, to be the vanishing cycle to find near A equals infinity. So it's the vanishing cycle as you approach the neuron in God. I also need something called the conifold point, uh, which I'll just mention uh, only twice in this talk, A hat, which is gonna be minus the minimum uh, value of phi on pairs of positive real numbers. Okay, so that's the family. The symbol that we need is minus x minus y restricted to an elliptic curve, just the toric symbol. Just take the two toric coordinates, restrict them to E. Um, that belongs to the kernels of the tame symbols along components of the base locus of the pencil, and so it lifts to a class on the total space of the vibration minus the neuron n got fiber. As before, we're interested in fiber-wise restrictions, ZS of curly Z. And we're gonna take the regulator of uh, the ZS. Uh, ZS here, S should really be A. So we take R of A to be the regulator of ZA. And here I write R gamma for the pairing of this regulator class against a homology class. And then by this star thing we had before, novel applied to R gives omega tensor dA over A with omega of A given by the standard residue one form, where this defines dA, the base. So this gives minus one over two pi I dA, D is logarithmic differentiation, applied to R gamma, 
this is a cohomology class, gives this cohomology class without the gamma. And so if you apply gamma, if you take the integral with respect to gamma, the derivative of this period, of this regulator period, so-called, is this period for all one cycles gamma. Okay. So really these regulator periods are nothing but integrals with respect to dA over A of the periods of omega. In particular, the periods of omega look like this. You have this generating function of constants and powers of the Laurent polynomial. Um, and that works on all A with modulus greater than that of the conifold point. So this is a punctured disk about infinity. And omega B is asymptotically like R circle over two pi I log A as A goes to infinity. I take the period ratio tau and the period lattice lambda and L for the Picard Fuchs operator killing omega. Then LD kills the regulator class. And in other words, I apply D, then I get the class omega, and then I apply L to omega and I get zero. And it's easy to check that both R alpha and R beta recover our periods A tilde, B tilde of the hori vafa model, both in the example that we had and more generally. And finally, we have this thing called the higher normal function, which you get by basically wedging and integrating over EA, the holomorphic form and the regulator class. And that can be written as R alpha omega beta minus R beta omega alpha, where now these are, these are all multi-valued functions. And this V of A solves, as before, Picard-Fuchs inhomogeneous equation, LV equals a constant. And by the standard choice of L, I just, I just mean something uh, which is in, so to speak, the polynomial ring over, over A and DA. Uh, and is minimal. This corresponds, you can, one way to think of this, if you don't like uh, this business, you can think about taking this family of cohomology classes in H1 of, with coefficients in C mod Z, and you can further project it modulo F1 H1. And that gives you a point in the Jacobian of the curve. So you can think of this higher normal function as telling you if you project the regulator class to the Jacobian, what do you get? So let's normalize V. This turns out to be very helpful um, to nu, like we did before, by dividing by the A period. And that makes it R alpha tau minus R beta. And we're interested in the set where this uh, capital V is in the period lattice, or lowercase nu, is in this version of the period lattice, z of one tau. And that generalizes the mixed attractor points from before. Um, so there's a small difference, not maybe not so small, but turns out to be negligible. We can replace z of one tau by, by z um, by theorem one below. So points at which this takes integer values turn out to be the same thing as points at which it takes values in here. Um, and this is more well-defined in any case because the thing is a multi-valued function. All right, so where are we at this point? We have partially completed the connection on the right-hand side of the diagram. We have algebraic K theory and regulators of K2 of our elliptic curves. And we have this, um, this V, uh, this set, from the last page, which is going to correspond to the z locus of this higher normal function. And it's a consequence of, um, well, I mean, it's more or less a variant of the definition we gave of mixed attractors from before. So this is fairly direct. Uh, we don't need any reference to tell us what this link is. But if you want to actually prove that regulators of K2 of curves identify with periods of Hori Vafa models, that's in my paper with Chuck Duran from 2011. Okay, so finally, on to quantum curves. And here I get to state the results. So let's begin with operators on L2 of R with coordinate little r. X hat will be multiplication by E to the R. Y hat will be e to the minus i h bar ddr for some, for some h bar real. 
And because we have this commutator, Campbell Baker Hausdorff tells us that if you want to relate the hat of this, namely e to the sum of these things, with um, e to these things individually, then there's going to be this commutator to the half interjecting in there. So the reason why I'm doing this, even though um, I am going to work with h bar equals two pi, where um, exponentially these things will commute. So when, a when I take h bar equals two pi, these will actually commute, but this does not work out to be e to the two pi i times an integer. It works out to be e to the i pi times an integer. And so there's a sign and you have to get the sign right because otherwise it doesn't work with varying h bar. So quantization is gonna replace phi equals some coefficients x to the m1, y to the m2. This is by Laurent polynomial by phi hat equals cm times the hat of the monomial. At h bar equals two pi, this becomes, um, let's see, there's a missing CM here. Sorry about that. Maybe in fact, that's so distracting, I'll just write it in, CM, CM. Okay, so what's going on? I have my sign to the M1, M2. I'm telling you that sign is the same to the M1 plus M2 plus one. That's because M is on the boundary of a reflexive polygon that I have that equal. And so I can now say, well, this is nothing but minus phi evaluated at minus x hat minus y hat formally. And so I'll use this, that the quantum operator can be written this way. So the first theorem is that the spectrum of phi hat actually contains our attractor point set in general. This just is always true for the 15 examples. That is for each a and v, there exists an eigenfunction psi a and L2 of R, it's non-zero, with phi hat psi a equals a psi a. Okay, but it has to be an attractor point, or it doesn't work. And asymptotically, 100% of sigma of phi hat belongs to V. Uh, in other words, if you look at the ratio of all eigenvalues to the eigenvalues that belong to V, that goes to one as you go to infinity. But we can't prove that they're all in there. Maybe they all are. It's left open. And um, maybe someone in the audience has an idea how to prove better than asymptotically 100%. Okay, so let me make some remarks before uh, telling you about the proof in our special case. Um, since the attractor points are contained in the spectrum and the spectrum is contained in the set of positive real numbers, we're in a region where mu of a is in the positive real numbers, or at least in the real numbers. And so to say that mu of a uh, is integral is the same thing as to say that mu of a is in z of one tau, because tau is not real. So it's also the case that mu of a and z is very different from saying that the regulator class is torsion. Um, to say the regulator class is torsion is to say that it's an H1 with coefficients in two pi i squared q mod z. Um, and one should view the difference between this and this as like rank one attractor points and rank two attractor points. It's the mixed analog of that. Yeah, so there's no intersection between those two things. Um, I, I'm saying this partly because the R of A is torsion is what you get in some uh, analyses. I'm thinking in particular of an old paper of Sergei Gukov um, uh, and Shulkowski I mean, that uh, showed in some settings that the regulator class or indeed the K2 class being torsion was supposed to correspond to uh, in, in the world of the WKB approximation. Um, uh, being in the spectrum, but of course we're not working in uh, perturbative topological string theory. We're working in the non-perturbative setting. We get a different answer. Okay, so sorry those both showed up at once. Ignore this for the time being. Suppose the growth and deep period conjectural. So what that's going to say in this set in this setting is that for any a that is in Q bar, 
the extension of Q-bar function fields here, or uh, fields generated over Q-bar here. This one is generated by the period ratio and two regulated periods. This one is just generated by the period ratio. Either it should have degree two or Mumford tape reduction, which means that R of A is torsion. That's the only possibility. Since the eigenvalues, on the other hand, A equals lambda J are not Mumford tape reduction points because this is different from this, but do have an algebraic relation. U of A is integral, making the transcendence degree of this less than or equal to one. That means that this cannot be true and the eigenvalues have to be transcendental. So if you believe the growth and period conjecture, these eigenvalues are interesting transcendental numbers. And finally, to show that our results confirm a case of the Geneva conjectures, we must match torsion invariance in the enumerative geometry of this local Calabi-Yau um, and in the limit mixed Hodge structure at A equals infinity of the variation of mixed Hodge structure I've been talking about. And that's a computation we do in our paper and you have to get that right. Um, but I'm not gonna say anything about it. Okay, let me explain in the eight or so minutes I have left how you get eigenfunctions. And I'm gonna do this in the very simplest case where the polygon is this diamond one. So define EA to P1 map pi by XY goes to X. So this is just a two to one map to the X coordinate. It has discriminant given by that involution um, given by sending Y to Y inverse. And then we can take a square root of the discriminant up on EA. And that's given by Y minus Y inverse everywhere. All right, so now I'm going to consider the rather strange um, infinite genus Riemann surface, EA cross tilde here, which is given by pulling back under minus the exponential map, EA cross, which is a four punctured version of our elliptic curve to C, okay? so. I do a base change like this. And I'll use the following notation. A point Z tilde in EA cross tilde maps down under this two to one map to Z in the complex plane. And it maps under this P to X of Z, Y of Z tilde, where X of Z is, e, is minus E to the Z. All right, that's the construction. And I'm gonna construct eigenfunctions in L2 of R by first constructing functions up here. So I take a base point, P naught in here, that's fixed under the involution and has Y of P naught equals negative one. And then uh, I need lifts of the involution to here. That's an involution of this over C, that would be called I tilde. And I need a lift of the point P naught here to, well, I guess I call it Z naught there. Um, and for a loop on uh, E A cross based at P naught, so a loop over here, since log of Y, uh, log of minus Y of P zero, this is negative one, log of one is zero, we can cross out the term log of minus Y of P naught integral of D uh, X over X from the balance and regulator formula. And the regulator formula now simply reads this. This is a simplification that you can make in this case that you can't make in the other cases. All right, now suppose I have an attractor point in moduli and I consider the value of the higher normal function at that point. We know, number one, it's always given by this, but at an attractor point, it's an integer combination of one and tau. So N1 and N2 are integers. And I write down this funky R alpha uh, as R alpha minus four pi squared N2, a little correction, so that we get R beta minus R alpha tau is uh, two pi I squared times an integer. And now we have this first lemma, and this is really the key in the construction of the eigenfunctions. You write down this chi A of Z tilde, which is the exponential of the following big integral. So we have a regulator piece, the integral is from the base point to the point at which I want to evaluate. Um, 
minus a sort of Abel Jacobi piece. So I'm integrating the holomorphic one form from C naught tilde to Z tilde. And I claim that's a well-defined holomorphic function upstairs. So the well-definedness is the thing you have to check. If there's a difference between two paths, like so. So that's my gamma tilde. And I project it down to EA. And that gives me a nice uh, one cycle that I can write as a combination of alpha and beta. Then the integral in the exponential evaluates in the following way. First, I have log minus x d log minus y integrated over gamma. That's just r gamma. And then I have the integral over gamma of omega. So I can evaluate this um, because the regulator is a linear map on, uh, you know, on homology, if you will. And then my period of omega evaluates like this. Same m1 and m2 as here. And then I just compute. And I see that I get four pi squared times an integer. And so the difference between taking the two paths is irrelevant once you plug it into x uh, one over two pi i, okay? Second lemma, if I take this weird function I just constructed and subtract its involute, it's pulled back under this iota and then divide by the square root of the discriminant, that descends to an entire function psi a on c under the two to one map. And this function is not identically zero. That's easy or comparatively easy. You don't have to use the regulator or anything. The denominator is simple poles at um, the, the pre-image of the fixed points of the involution are canceled by zeros of the numerator. Um, so you get, um, you get, uh, holomorphicity after you check that it's well defined. In other words, applying iota tilde to z tilde changes the sign of numerator and denominator. And so it doesn't change the whole thing at all. And finally, you have to check that the thing is non zero somewhere. So we do all that in the paper. Now I restrict my function on C, my entire function that I just constructed, to the real line. This is a non zero analytic function. And we have x hat applied to psi a is just e to the r by definition, but e to the r is minus x of r by our construction. y hat, on the other hand, is the shift operator. And so we get what I'll call s applied to psi a, which by abuse of notation, I'll also call s applied to little psi a. So that tells me that phi hat applied to, phi, to psi a is minus the Laurent polynomial evaluated x of r minus the shift operator applied to psi a. Lemma three, psi a is in L2. So we estimate near points in the boundary uh, as r goes to plus or minus infinity that the regulator term in the integral looks like i, to, I over two pi cr squared. And so that just tells me this exponential oscillates a lot. It doesn't go to infinity or anything. And so that means the numerator here is bounded on R. Uh, the denominator, on the other hand, is dominated by e to the plus or minus R over 2. And so we get this bounding of our uh, putative eigenfunction. And so now all that's left is to show that it's an eigenfunction. So writing tau of z is z minus 2 pi i tau tilde, the unique lift of that to our infinite genus thing uh, that doesn't affect its projection to the original elliptic curve. Um, and writing S tilde for the pullback under that lift, we have S tilde applied to chi A is multiplication by Y of Z tilde. That's what we need. So to sketch why that's true, the left-hand side here, the shift operator, is the integral from z naught tilde to tau tilde of z tilde. And we can break up that integral like this and now recognize this thing as going from a point to another point that map down to the same point in E a cross and so descends to a loop on E a cross. So we can ignore it by the proof of lemma one. And we can now rewrite the rest, the part here, 
as this integral of tau upper, upper star of the integrand. And when you do tau upper star of the integrand, you get z minus two pi i and no other changes. And so at the end of the day, I get the original thing without the two pi i, which is this term here. And the two pi i part, once you multiply by that, contributes this, which is nothing more than minus y of z tilde, because minus y of z naught tilde is one. To summarize, we had shown that this psi a tilde thing descends to an entire function on C and its restriction to R then satisfies this. Now lift phi hat to this operator for functions on EA cross tilde. And we apply it to chi a of z tilde this term here, on which it gives multiplication on which, on which what? On which minus s tilde gives multiplication by y of z tilde. And when I apply it to this term, this operator gives multiplication by y of iota of z tilde. But the equation of the curve says minus phi of xy equals a. And so this thing here and this thing here both give multiplication by A. And so that gives me my eigencondition because the shift operator doesn't affect this denominator. And so we finally get the main result that for attractor points, you always get an eigenfunction. And that completes the diagram. Um, and I would uh, like to finish by congratulating uh, Bong on his birthday. <laughs>